Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I brought two meditation books with me today, um, but I also have a little something special extra to read to you that uh, my best friend, Tony Jean, passed on to me. So I want to read that in just a second. Um, but I actually went in and I looked at the different meditation titles to see um, what they're about. And one is about uh, having support in our life, and the other one is about humility. And I thought, these are two fantastic topics to talk about. So I want to talk about both of them. So um, I'm going to get into the one about humility first. I can't believe that is. Can you guys believe it's almost December 1st? I feel like since this summer that like time has just flown by. My husband and I were actually talking about this the other night. He was saying to me that, he felt like summer was so long, and it, I, it does seem that way. It, you know, I really tried to enjoy every moment of um, this summer, and then this fall and winter is just, I've like been so busy and stuff, you know? And I really think that um, the art of being present or the practice of being present really allows us to enjoy those 24 hours that we're given each and every single day m more fully, you know? And I have really been practicing in the last year, most the last two years, but really the last year, the uh, just being present in my life on a daily basis and what I have to do for that day and enjoying today to the fullest, you know? And I got up super early this morning. I got up at like 8 o'clock. I know it's hard to believe. Um, I actually stayed up until like 2.30 last night. And so I got up at 8 o'clock and um, got some stuff done that I had to do and took a shower, did my hair, started filming videos. It's just been a really, really good day. I've got a lot of errands run today. I've been listening to my audiobook while I've been driving around, which has been fun. And I've been just trying to stay present in today. And uh, tonight, uh, my literature group that started during the lockdown two years ago, um, we have taken off some time. And so we are resuming after about two months. And I am so excited about that. Um, I mean, I've seen my friends at meetings and stuff, but this is our own little like private Zoom group that we do. And I'm so excited to start it up again. And um, it's just our kind of little like, you know, sober sister fun that we have. And it's so just delightful and helpful too. And, and in talking about support, it's like, that is one area that I have so much support in is just those friendships that I've made, especially during all of that, you know, that we stayed connected on a, on a weekly basis. So let's get into uh, today's meditations. Oh, my glasses are over there. Oh, well. Humility. And this is from Linda Picone's The Daily Book of Positive Quotations. Humility. Humility is the only true wisdom by which we prepare our minds for all the possible changes of life. George Arliss. Being humble is not the same as lacking confidence. Humility means acknowledging that we have limits, that we need support and guidance from others, that we cannot go in completely alone. We can have great confidence in ourselves while still understanding that it is impossible to be totally self-reliant in this complex, challenging, and rapidly changing world. If we acknowledge that we can't manage everything by ourselves, we are more likely to ask for help from others and achieve success. I'm a competent person, but I know I can't do everything myself. I will not be shy about asking for help when I need it, which kind of goes along with the idea of support, which we're going to be talking about in just a second. And you know, this idea of humility is so interesting to me. I mean, it's a, it's a principle and a character trait that I think that is so discussed and admired in recovery and a, a real goal to work towards, you know? It's always interesting to me um, when I hear from people and they'll be like, I'm so humble. Like, I'm one of the most humble people that you'll know because to me, that is such an oxymoron <laughs> to tell somebody how humble you are. You know, I am the most humble person you will ever meet. <laughs> it's, it's, you know that's going to be the title of this video. Um, it's such an oxymoron because I think of the opposite of humility as being arrogance and pride, right? Like, I think humility is being right-sized, you know, and and realizing that, you know, we're no greater and no worse than anybody else. And, you know, like, let me tell you a good example of humility. I remember, and I've shared this story before, and it's just, it's so interesting to me in life when I look back, the small moments that have really had a profound uh, effect on me. Because I was probably young. I don't even know when this movie came out, in my 20s or something. But it was when the movie Schindler's List um, it was that year that it won um, Best Picture. And at the same time, there was a documentary, and I, I believe um, that Steven Spielberg was um, on, like, helped with that documentary as well. And so 
and it was about uh, the concentration camps and this one survivor, and it was her story. And so when she, like, when that documentary won for Best Documentary that year, um, she stood up with her acceptance speech. I wish I could find this acceptance speech on YouTube somewhere. I'm sure it exists somewhere. But when she won, she stood up and, and holding the Oscar, she said out to the audience, she said, I have asked myself for the last 50 years, why me? I am no different, R referring to herself as a survivor. And you, you think about that, and, uh, about somebody that has gone through such huge tragedy and trials, you know, to say in that moment, I ask myself on a daily basis, why me? Why did I survive? I am no different, you know? That to me is the true, true meaning of humility. When we can, you know, see ourselves in others and see others in ourselves. And I think in right-sizing ourselves and never getting too full of ourselves. I am such a believer that we should love ourselves. I am such a believer that we should think amazing things about ourselves and think that we're awesome and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But there's a problem when it starts going to our head, you know? When we think that we're better than other people, we are not better than any, anybody else, um, you know? And I think, like... I love saying that death is a great equalizer of all humanity, you know, because it's true. You know, in the end, we're, we're all going to die, you know. It's like my sponsor always says, and it's not one of my favorite quotes that she says either, but because it's the truth. But she says we all have an expiration date, you know. We do. We all have an expiration date. I think that's another, you know, humbling reminder of our existence here on Earth. I'm real turned off by super arrogant people. Um, and just because part of it's a turn off for me, but also part of it is I feel like they're missing out on so much, right? Like when you are unteachable and you can't see, I, I feel like the greatest... <laughs> The greatest thing that has happened to me in the last 10 years or 15 years is my acceptance of, of this idea that life is a learning experience, that the entire meaning behind life is to learn as much as you possibly can about the world and about how to interact and trust and trust and treat others and be kind to others. And so when you don't have that view, I feel like you're really missing out on the world. And so, it, yes, it's a turnoff for me. But at the same time, it makes me sad for people that don't have hu any humility. And, you know, like, I think it's something that we constantly work on, you know? I mean, I feel like in my life, I have only probably been introduced or come into the path of maybe three to five people that are truly, truly humble, you know? And I think the rest of us are all works in action, you know? I wanted to read this recovery quote um, that my friend Tanya shared with me the other day. And we were talking about humility because this is the thing. You never reach that pinnacle of like, I'm the most humble person in the world, right? You never reach that pinnacle. It's just, we're constantly working towards these goals of being kinder, of being more gentle, of being a better person, of being, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> if gooder were a word, which it's not, but a gooder person, you know, a better person than I was the day before. And so, you know, Tanya and I and my friends, we all share these different things with each other because we need these aha moments to inspire and motivate us to continue to do the work you know, so that we can continue to get better. And I think this is the thing, right, that a lot of people miss out on is the, the more work we do on ourselves, the more work we do on who am I in this world that is all around me as I am just one small part of this universe, the more we are able to enjoy the world, right? Because we see it through right-sized eyes. We, we see it through a different point of view or like we say in recovery sometimes, through a different pair of glasses, you know? And to have like a complete paradigm shift where all your life you saw things this way and then all of a sudden it's like, whoop, you're over here and you see things from a different point of view. It's like, have you ever had that moment where you're like, oh my God, I never saw it that way before, right? And, and that's why like we all share these things with each other, these little sayings and whatever because they're so helpful to us. This is actually from Recovery Text, but I want to read it because I think it's so fantastic. Humility is perpetual quietness of heart. It is to have no trouble. It is never to be fretted or vexed, irritable or sore, to wonder at nothing that is done to me, to feel nothing done against me. It is to be at rest when nobody praises me and when I am blamed or despised. It is to have a blessed home in myself where I can go in and shut the door and kneel to my father in secret and be at peace, as in a deep sea of calmness when all around and about is seeming trouble. And I just love that so much, this idea of just quiet inner peace within ourselves and realizing that the world isn't going to change that much because of my response to it. You know, I don't have to respond at all. You know, 
two things that I have that have really, really helped me that my sponsor gave me. If I could give just, I should probably save this for another video, but maybe I'll expand on it later. Two of the greatest lessons I have learned in 2021 and uh, is, uh, I, I said it in a video and somebody said, I think you mean spin out of control. No, that's not what I meant at all. My sponsor always says, let them twirl. Meaning when there's a lot of stuff coming towards you or people are trying to poke the bear or people are trying to like get a reaction out of you, she always just says to me, let them twirl. Let them twirl. Let them talk about it. Let them, You're not in that, like Oprah used to say, you know, or my angel used to say to Oprah, you're not in that, right? Like, that's not about you. Let them twirl. And, you know, and, um, and the other thing that she always says to me is you don't have to participate in this. Like, it's a choice. Oh, my God. How freeing that is that at 49 years old, I realized because my sponsor told me. I don't have to participate in drama with my friends and family and anybody. You know what I mean? Like, I can just let things be, you know? And what's so interesting about that is this, right? Whereas I thought my opinion was pretty damn important before, right? Like, I would always want to share my opinion with other people about how they should live their lives or what they were doing. You know, I'm talking about, like, I know I have a drama channel. I'm talking about in my personal life, right? Like, I'd always say, you know, do you care if I share my opinion on what I think, you know? And they'd say, yeah, of course, and whatever, but... You know, what I realized is the quieter that I have become, the less I participate in all of that crazy drama. Well, first of all, the less toxicity I have in my life, because what I realized is I have through the years, ask yourself if you have ever done this, okay, where you have inserted yourself into the middle of stuff. I have really borrowed other people's toxicity, negativity, and craziness that has nothing to do with me. And I really shouldn't have put myself in the middle or borrowed any of it, number one, okay? Number two, <laughs> Boo Rally is over here digging uh, his bed into his little bed over there. It's so cute. The other thing, okay, that I have realized is that when I don't participate in all of that, People are more likely to go, well, what do you think about this? Because I'm just sitting over there quiet and calm and whatever. And I'm like, well, do you really want to know? And they say yes. And, and you know what I usually say to them? Let them twirl. You don't have to participate. And I think that's the thing, you know? And like, hey, listen, I learned this month one of being sober because I read the book, The Cel Celestine Pro Prophecy. Do you guys remember we reread that on this channel? By the way, I think I'm going to start picking up the motivational books again in January. Um, my mother-in-law is really, really wanting to read a 40 Days and 40 Nights by Melody Beatty. So I'm going to get her a copy and I think that we can read that all over here together if you guys would like to. 40 Days and 40 Nights. Um, it's basically a gratitude book like uh, the Rhonda Byrne book, uh, The Magic. So we can do that over here starting in January. I think it would be a good way to start January, honestly. But, you know, it's like just passing it on. And it's like in that book, The Celestine Prophecy, one of the things I learned was that, like, don't put gas on the fire. Like, if you're sitting there and you're having an argument with somebody or whatever, you can just at some point just choose silence. Choose to not participate. The fire will die. If you're not putting gasoline on the fire and it's just one person, sooner or later the fire, fire will die, right? Wow. Two very simple but very, very powerful lessons I have learned this year. Let them twirl. Don't, don't get involved in all that. Let them twirl. It's their business, not yours. And don't participate. And I just pass it on to other people. It's not like the greatest wisdom in the world. It's just things that people have taught me, right? And I, and I love that so much. So those have been two of the greatest lessons that I have learned this year. Um, all right, let's get into uh, the next meditation, which is from the Meditations for Living in Balance, Daily Solutions for People Who Do Too Much by Ann Wilson Chef. One of my new favorite meditation books. November 29th, support. I always wanted to be somebody if I've made it, and it's half because I was game to take a wicked amount of punishment along the way, and half because there, was, there were an awful lot of people who cared enough to help me. Um, Althea Gibson. In order for us to feel and be balanced, we need to have support. We humans are group creatures. None of us really makes it alone, even though we may like to think that we do. And I have it many times in my life said, I'm a loner. I just like to be by myself. I can figure everything out on my own. I don't need help from others. And wow, what I have realized is that may be true, but life is a lot easier when you have a circle of cheerleaders around you and people to help you through the thing that we like to call life, right? For us to have all the energy we need to do our work, whatever that work is, we need support, especially emotional support. Emotional support works best when it is an, an infinity sign with a support flowing in some reasonable equal way between and among people. If some are always the takers and some are always the givers of emotional support, it just doesn't work very well. The givers get depleted and resentful. 
The givers get <clears throat> the givers get depleted and resentful unless they have ascended, and it and the takers eventually feel angry and be held, beholden. One of the ways that we can contribute to balance in our own and in others' lives is by learning how to give and receive support. What's your giving and receiving support quotient? Be honest now. <laughs> Are you unbalanced in this important area? I think I probably am. You know, I think it's, it, it, and you know, put the lasso of truth around me. Um, I think that people are more giving to me than I am to them. I have really worked hard this year and uh, like trying to make it a conscious action on a daily basis of being a giver, of doing random acts of kindness and, you know, just doing and, and not to pat my shoulder and say I'm such a wonderful person, but really because I just want to get into the routine of thinking that way, you know? It's like I grew up with a mother and an aunt that if somebody was sick or somebody died, you know, you immediately took them a casserole or a loaf of bread and, you know, and... I don't know, there was a prayer line that went out and you contacted people and said, hey, did you know that so-and-so? You know, like, I'm really trying to be more of that. Just like that thoughtful person of what really makes my life and what really makes my life are the people around me, you know? For those of you that watch my vlog, um, I'm sure many of the people that watch this channel also watch my vlog, there is a group called the Vlogarinos. And, um, you know, it's, uh, they call themselves Peter Mont Vlogarinos on Facebook. And they, all of them over there, it's just like people that have watched my vlog and now they have become friends in this Facebook group. It really has nothing to do with me. And I just delight in reading these posts over there, okay? At how kind and caring and compassionate these people are. And they're really, to be honest with you, role models for me. Because I sit there and it's like somebody will say, hey, I'm like really having like a hard time today, blah, 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 whatever. And there's like five or 10 comments underneath there. Hey, I'm thinking of you or I'm praying for you. Or, you know, like, hey, I hope your day gets better and whatever. And it's like, it has really taught me how very little it takes to show somebody empathy and sympathy and compassion and kindness, you know? It just, it doesn't really take that much. And yet, it seems like we all struggle so hard in life with being kind to one another. You know, it's like <laughs> the great mystery of the world. It's so easy to get on social media and be nasty, right? But how difficult is it to get on social media and be nice? How difficult is it to pick up the phone and text or call someone and say, I'm just thinking of you today. You know, I, I, I don't tell people this very often in my personal life and they don't watch my videos anyway, but there's two or three people, four or five people that I call every other day. Like I, I don't have a, like a list or a rotation. It kind of started back when we were on lockdown, you know, that I would call a couple people every single day and I've continued that, you know, and not one person has said, it's so funny that you call me every other day and I always just be like, hey, I was just thinking of you. What are you doing? You know, but that's for me too. Like that's selfish because then I feel connected to other people as well. And I think, you know, I think if from the people in my life that have passed and, I, and, and by me looking at their lives and what their lives were an example of, if I could ask those people and I can't to look back on their lives and say what was important they had wonderful trips and wonderful clothing and wonderful experiences and all that. But I really think that what they would say was the most important thing was the priceless experiences and interactions that they had with their friends and family in their life. Some maybe even strangers that they interacted with, you know? That is the gift that we can give people, you know, by being a joy in people's life and, um, and, and trying to uplift people and make their days better. And that's something that we can each and every single one of us do, you know? We can each of us be a better friend. We can each of us be a better son, you know, daughter, sister, grandparent, wife, husband, you know? pet owner. My dogs are just sitting right here staring at me. Well, Tucker's staring the other way, but he's, he went, looked back at me and said, who me? Um, but we can all be better in that, you know? And it's asking ourselves on a daily basis, how can I be better? How can I be better tomorrow than I was today, you know? And it's not about being perfect. We never reach perfection. It's about continuing to grow and, and accepting the fact that I'm going to continue to grow until the day that I'm not growing anymore, until the, the day that I'm no longer breathing and I'm not here. And if we stay in that, wow, what a life we're going to have, you know? So anyway, with fantastic meditations today. I love those. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Every, just on this channel, they do this. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.